You are going to begin by safely raising and supporting the vehicle along with removing the rear wheels. For additional assistance with that task, please follow the link provided at the end of this video. Next, you need to remove the tow arm, green arrow, from the wheel hub, red arrow, and the subframe, blue arrow, as well as remove the sway bar and drop links. Remove the brake caliper, rotor, lines, parking brake assembly, and wheel speed sensor. Remove the upper and diagonal arms. You're going to remove the wheel carrier, red arrow. You can leave the shock in place as well as the axle, but you must support the axle. I recommend removing them. It just takes a little more time, but you should not be in a rush if you are doing this job. Remove the lower control or coffin arm. You can find instructions and videos for all of these procedures by following the link provided at the end of this video. With everything removed, use a 10mm socket and remove the bracket that holds the brake and sensor lines, red arrow. Use a 16mm socket and remove the three fasteners holding the diagonal braces in place, red arrows. Use a 16mm wrench or socket and remove the two bolts and the cross brace, red arrows. The cross member is held in place by two 16mm bolts and 18mm nuts. You will fully remove the lower nut and bolt, red arrows. Due to the cutout design of the upper section of the cross member, you just need to loosen the upper bolt, blue arrow. It will loosen the cross member and you can lower it down. The subframe is now held to the chassis by three 18mm nuts. The design has changed over the years. Our 2011 had two bolts and a stud on the forward connection, red arrows. Some vehicles will have studs that might come out while removing. That is fine, just reinstall them. Here is an example of the forward stud with the 18mm nut removed. There is a rubber isolator with a hard metal collar between the nut and the subframe. Note the length of the bolts when you're removing them. With the three fasteners removed, the subframe is free of the chassis and can be removed. Use care not to drop it. This image shows the two rear bolts, red arrows, and the forward stud, blue arrow. Due to the design of the subframe, you cannot press out the bushings. You can remove them with a threaded rod and socket system, but first you must cut and grind the metal collar off of the bushing to get a socket to seat. Due to the cost of the subframe, we took ours to a race shop that made quick work of them. We still ended up saving a lot of money as most of the cost of this job is in the labor and removing and reinstalling the components and subframe itself saved us a lot of money. We decided to install the Renline Street subframe bushings. They are a great replacement for a car that only sees occasional track time. Again, there are many options, but you trade off ride quality for performance. Installation is the reverse of removal. Do not put any grease on the Dacromet finished fasteners. If you are reinstalling the chassis studs, torque them to 96 newton meters or 34 foot pounds. Torque the subframe bolts to chassis to 110 newton meters or 81 and a half foot pounds. Torque the subframe to cross member to 110 newton meters or 81 and a half foot pounds. The diagonal braces with M10 fasteners should be torqued to 65 newton meters or 48 foot pounds and M12 fasteners to 110 newton meters or 81 and a half foot pounds. Torque the upper diagonal nut to 23 newton meters or 17 foot pounds. Torque the transverse strut to 65 newton meters or 48 foot pounds. You will now need to get your car aligned. Installation of all other components is the reverse of removal and again please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with all of those tasks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.